Can your career be over before it starts? I think it's possible with Joe Burrow. So as a dad, and every dad listening is going to either, they're going to laugh when I say this because they know it's true. The truest answer is always the shortest from your kids. The more they start ad-libbing about what happened to the cookie, what happened to the food in the refrigerator, the more they start ad-libbing, they're making stuff up. The truest answer is, I didn't do it or I did do it. So whenever I see a politician or a kid or a boss or a talk show host, you know, cornered a little bit, give me the truth, and they extend their answer and they use words over and over, it's like because they don't have an honest answer. So Joe Burrow is winning a bunch of awards, right? And he's at these awards, the Davey O'Brien Award, and they ask him about Cincinnati. And in Instead of just saying, can't wait to be drafted by the Bengals. I mean, he's a Ohio kid, right? He grew up watching the Bengals. He was asked about the Bengals and his answer. He uses the word process a lot. He says, look, this is a long process. They have their process. Later in the bite, he says, it's a long process. A lot of people say a lot of things. He also has a quote, I do have some leverage. Why would leverage matter if you're going to the Bengals? Listen, Joe Burrow's smart. His dad's a coach. His dad was smart. There's four organizations, maybe five, but mostly four, that are poorly run. Washington, Cleveland, Cincinnati, and Detroit. Matt Stafford's career has been affected. There is no question he would be better in a better organization. The Bengals don't have a playoff win since 1990 in Boomer Esiason. It was so long ago, the team they beat, the Houston Oilers, doesn't exist. It is hard not to stumble into a playoff win, I don't know, in two decades Don't you just kind of stumble into it? You get a lucky break. Your schedule works out. Your rival in the division has injuries. Cincinnati's poorly run. If Burrow signs, he is locked for seven years. It's over. It's over. Drew Brees is rare. Drew Brees is one of the only quarterbacks in league history that got a reboot and turn his career around. Steve Barkowski and Carson Palmer were both drafted by bad organizations. Steve Barkowski came out this week. I remember him. He played at Cal. He was the good-looking, golden arm, played at Cal, went to lousy Atlanta. Atlanta at the time was lousy. It ruined his career. He said this week, he goes, I spent more time in the hospital than I actually did. He should pull an Eli Manning, said Barkowski. I know what it's like to go to a bottom feeder. I spent more time at a hospital recuperating from injuries my first three years than I did throwing touchdowns. It was tough. Cincinnati's got a bad old line. They have an 84-year-old cheap owner who acts as a GM. They have the smallest scouting department. I don't know if Zach Taylor can coach. I hope he can. I think he may be able to, but I don't know. They didn't look brilliantly coached last year, and that division has got nothing but good defenses, and Joe Burrow's going to get eaten alive. This is tough, man. This is a real decision. It's not like this in baseball. It's not like this in the NBA. If you get drafted as a quarterback in the NFL and they like you, you are trapped for seven years. They can franchise you and again and transition tag you. You're trapped. It's a real decision. Carson Palmer played for the Bengals. He came on Speak for Yourself about a month ago in Miami and said this. I mean, if you just look at the history of the organization, they've successfully been very unsuccessful throughout (laughs) their entirety. So I took my stance with the organization back when I did for a reason, and I felt like um, it was time for me to move on. Yeah. Uh, By the way, Joe Burrow is being coached now by Jordan Palmer, Carson Palmer's brother. So this is very real. I have said this. Two is going to have a better career Than Joe Burrow. Why? Because of where he lands. Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson are going to have better careers probably than Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold because of where they land. You get trapped. This is real stuff here. It's why I believe Joe Burrow has to push back as long as this ownership group is in place. It's a cheap franchise. It's dysfunctional. And if you look at the four or five teams that don't win playoff games in this league, they all have one thing in common. Bad owners, Washington, Cleveland, Cincinnati, Detroit, bad owners. Joe Burrow, this is serious. It's time to make a tough decision. I'll say it again. I think he should pull an Elway. I think he should pull an Eli. I got to tell you something. Um, I am the New England Brady thing. A lot of people are saying this. I know what a lot of you think as the public. You think we're all just making crap up. You think he's going to go back to New England. And I do think that's about 70%. 
But I'm going to tell you that people in this business who are connected very close to Tom think he's gone. They think he's gone. Now, I have one great source on this who is close to Tom. Tom, it's not a money issue. He's scared he's going to get trapped. As we've talked about, Tom, the New England Patriots have to pay, have to pay Tom in mid-March. That way, it's less of a cap hit. So New England's probably going to make him an offer, whatever they make him, March 16th, 17th, 18th. Tom's concern is, I don't know what you're going to do. Do you have the free agents by then? What are you going to do in the draft? Because Tom knows New England doesn't spend money. They, don't, they like to find value in everybody, even wide receivers. So today a mock draft came out from uh, Mel Kuyper. And it's fascinating because it's Tom Brady's worst nightmare. So Mel Kuyper has the Patriots first pick in the first round, Number 23, a receiver? No. A tight end? No. Giving Tom help? No. Jacob Eason, quarterback at Washington. And by the way, that's exactly what they do. So Brady signs and gets his money, and they draft his replacement. And then the Patriots don't have a second-round pick. So by the time they draft at the end of the third round, the eight to ten best receivers are gone, and the best tight end's gone. And Bill doesn't spend money on free agent wide receivers or tight ends. This is Brady's fear. Mel Kuyper's mock draft is what New England's going to do. So, Tom, this is why I think Tom cannot worry about money. He just has to get over the money. This is the least uh, important facet for this. And I know it's respect, blah, blah, blah. Your net worth's a fortune. What Tom needs is weapons. That's why I think I've done my Brady pie. I do think... The Tennessee Titans are the best fit. It gives Tom two things he doesn't currently have. Good weapons, star running back, and it gives him fun. Him and Vrabel are boys. And I do think Tom at this point, as his wife said in the documentary, he wants to be respected. Vrabel respects him. He'll be treated like a god in Nashville. And Nashville's a fun city. So it, it, I know the fans. I ran into fans a couple weeks ago. I was skiing. And I ran into four guys in a bar, uh, great guys from New Hampshire and Boston. They were Patriot guys. And they're like, you guys in the media. That's how they talk in New Hampshire. You guys in the media. He's signing with the Patriots. And I'm like, I think he is. But don't go crazy on this. Jeff Darlington's an excellent NFL reporter. Darlington is very well connected in the Tom Brady circles. I've known Jeff for a long time. He's a real pro. He thinks it's less than 50-50. Like, Tom is trapped on that. Tom, once you're Tom Brady or LeBron James, here's the one thing you won't stand for, being trapped. You're not going to tell LeBron. LeBron's life's not perfect. He may not get the perfect coach or the perfect bench or the perfect teammates. He's not going to feel trapped or he's going to bolt. That's why he signed one-year contracts. Tom worked really hard to become a free agent. Okay, he worked really hard to do this. Have leverage, have free agency. He's going to listen to offers. So you're kidding yourself if you think he's not going to listen to offers. And this is the prime issue. Mel Kuyper's mock draft is Brady's fear. Is it they don't have a second pick. And the first one, they're just going to pick my replacement. And by the time the Patriots have a third pick, the eight to ten best receivers are gone and the best tight end's gone. And we know you don't spend money. Now, I think it's all solvable. I think this is all totally solvable with one move. I think the Patriots should go out and get Stephon Diggs. I think Tom Brady should say, you sign Stephon Diggs, Minnesota, I'm in. I won't even ask for the most money. Stephon Diggs is unhappy in Minnesota. Minnesota would love to have a second pick. They need to get a quarterback to replace Kirk Cousins in one year. They also have two good tight ends, a star running back, Adam Thielen. They have a very good defensive roster. They draft well. Minnesota, hey, New England, here's the. we'll give you our first round pick. You give us Stephon Diggs. And I think it would solve everything. Tom would have a deep threat. Now Edelman could be your two. Muhammad Sanu could be your three. Nikhil Harry could be your four. That's a pretty good receiving core. That, that solves a lot of issues. Stephon Diggs, your one. Edelman's a great two to three. Muhammad Sanu and Nikhil Harry, the young kid, gets a little better. That's four guys you can trust. Philip Dorsett still can make an occasional play. Uh, they had the other, I forget, Jacoby Myers, the other. Yeah, he's your fifth receiver, your fifth out. They got enough running backs. That's not the issue. So I think you could solve it all if Tom just said, you promised me Stephon Diggs, Minnesota. Minnesota's looking to move off him for the right pick. They are. He's unhappy there. Look at his Instagram. Adam Thielen of the Vikings every day is like, I love America. Stephon Diggs is, pay me some money. 
Give me respect. Now, he's expensive. He's 14 million bucks, but he's a great player, and they are a loaded roster, and they are going to have to move him anyway, and I think now is the time. you got a team that needs it. So I think the Brady stuff is real. I think he's considering other options. I think Jeff Darlington knows. I think it's real stuff, and I think he could solve all of it. But we know this organization does not have a history of spending $14 million on wide receivers. They just don't. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.